Constitution. We take the line from the right. Now let's think up another right. How about the right to work? Contract your labor and your skill and your time of life as you see fit. Now, your right to work is protected by the Constitution under the First Amendment. Again, you have a right to work and contract your labor and your skill and your time of life as you see fit. I get hauled into court before uh, the chief judge of this big court here in Oakland County. I won't give you the judge's name because he was a fair judge and a good judge and I'm going to let him slide. But the bottom line is this, he looked just like Abe Lincoln. I mean exactly, he was the spitting image. And he leans over the chair and he says, well, he says, uh, it's been reported to me, son, that you don't have a license to practice law, is that correct? And I looked up at him and I said, judge, I'm not practicing, I know what the hell I'm doing. And the whole court broke out laughing. He said, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like somebody with a sense of humor. He said, but that doesn't change anything, son. You have to have a license to practice law. And I said, Your Honor, I'm an unenfranchised common law free man. I live at the common law. I am not a participant in any tontine schemes of limited liability on a joint venture for profit with an insurable interest requiring me to participate in these illegal corporate Ponzi schemes. I am just Joe Blow from Kokomo down on the street. I just live at the common law. And I have a right to work and contract my labor, my skill, and my time of life as I see fit, not as some third-party arbitrary and capricious bar association sees fit. And they had loaded the court with all these attorneys. And they were, oh, you hear that guy? I said, Your Honor, the state of Michigan arbitrarily and erroneously converted my right to work into a privilege and issued a license and a fee for it. That's unconstitutional, Your Honor. Marbury v. Madison, 5 U.S. 137, 1803. Anything in conflict or repugnancy is null and void of law. Okay? Can you see that? Marbury versus Madison. And since the state converted my right into a privilege and issued a license and a fee for it, Murdoch versus Pennsylvania, no state may convert a secured liberty into a privilege and issue a license and a fee for it. And if they do, Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, Alabama says I may ignore the license and the fee and engage in the right with impunity. That means you can't punish me. In U.S. versus Bishop, 412 U.S. 346 defines willfulness as an evil motive or intent to avoid a known duty or task under the law with a moral certainty. I submit, Your Honor, I couldn't have done an evil task because I was totally following the Constitution in the U.S. Supreme Court. I would submit that prosecution counsel's burden is to prove that I did willfully and knowingly avoid a known duty or task under the law, and namely to get the license. And I would submit he specifically precluded he cannot perform his task, and therefore I'd motion for dismissal with prejudice failure, state a cause of action for which relief can be granted, and I'd kind of like to collect my costs and fees for having to defend this frivolous, spurious complaint. The judge rolls back in his chair with a great big smile, and he turns to the counsel for the prosecution. He says, Whoa, Mr. Rose, what do you think we ought to do about this young gentleman? The prosecution bounces back. How about we honor the motion to dismiss, Your Honor? The judge says, Good answer, because I don't think you're ready for this kid today. And the whole court broke out laughing. And an old gentleman walked up to me and he said, Son, I just want to shake your hand and tell you, you got to have like King Kong. Because you just slammed the Bar Association right into the ground. On top of that, I've been an attorney for 57 years and I just want to shake your hand, sir, and tell you that that was one of the most magnificent arguments that I've ever had the privilege to hear in a court of law. Now, he was an honest attorney and he realized what kind of a chain was around his ankle with this bar association. And these lawyers, they resent that. They really do. And they're people just like you. They don't like to have any chains on them. But they hadn't had anybody quite show them how to get those chains off. And when they saw somebody do it in their own skill, with their own, you know, with their own cards, on their own playing field, it actually impressed the hell out of them. I had several gentlemen come up and, and shake my hand that day. Needless to say, the case was dismissed, and I've been helping little people getting jammed for years. Every time I see some little person get jammed, I'm out there flipping that wrench. Zingy, zingy, zingy.